Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Benson. I'm a foreign lawyer. I'm an English solicitor and I work for ANSE Law Offices and I primarily help our foreign clients who have legal problems in Korea. So today I want to talk about distribution agreements. What do you need to know about uh, distribution agreements in Korea? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so three things. Introduction. Uh, Korea is a place to do business. Why we should be concerned about distribution agreements, the law, and then I'll give you some specific examples. Okay, so doing business in Korea. So I've lived here for some 16 years, so I'm fairly familiar with the market, and I guess we can analyze it from uh, two perspectives. First one is the commercial perspective. Uh, so what's your business decision to come to Korea? And then the second perspective is um, the legal perspective. And as lawyers, we, we hope to advise on both the uh, commercial and uh, legal perspective. So a few words on the commercial side of things. So Korea is a great place to do business. Uh, has a highly educated population. It's sophisticated. Uh, and it's got a well-developed market. But on the flip side, there are perhaps two main concerns. The first one is there's a significant level of vertical and horizontal um, integration. Uh, so there are some very big companies that have a lot of control, perhaps disproportionate control over the market. And the second one, uh, which I've fallen foul of, so you know I've adv advised... Um, uh, uh, companies, but I've also tried to do business here myself. And uh, one assumption that's frequently made is that uh, if something works in, say, England or the US or the EU, then ipso facto, by the fact itself, it will work in Korea. And that's 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 wrong. You shouldn't make that assumption. And um, you know, hence you, you would need to do your uh, research on the market. And one of the uh, easiest steps into the uh, market. Um, w without too much expense, is uh, a distribution model, hence uh, the purpose of this uh, video. So distribution um, is often seen as a, a perceived as a first step into a foreign market. Okay, so let's move on. Let's take a look at the law. There are three uh, main uh, laws which uh, are relevant to distribution agreements in Korea. The first one is the Act on Private International Law. The second one is the Monopoly Regulation and Fair Trade Act. And the third one is the Fair Agency Transactions Act. And I'll just give a very brief overview of what you need to know about each of these laws. So moving on to the Act on Private International Law. So Article 25, subject Section 1 provides that if a contract is governed by um, law, parties will choose explicitly or implicitly. If implied, then from, uh, it's from all the circumstances. So basically, the, the, the parties are free to choose which law um, they want to apply. Uh, choice of law clauses are beyond the scope of this um, video. However, if there is no choice of law clause in the contract, then it will be implied by all the circumstances. Um, okay. And then that's reinforced by Article 12, Subsection 1. The law will be determined by this Act. So basically, the, the summary of this is that the parties are free. Uh, there's freedom of contract. Uh, so if you, if you want to have English law applying, then you can have English law applying. And if you want to have Korean law applying, then you can have Korean law applying. However... Uh, if you have um, a, a choice of law clause which says um, English law applies and the the, uh, uh, the courts of England and Wales will uh, have jurisdiction in the matter and then you, you have a, a lawsuit there and you win, then you have to enforce um, the agreement in Korea and the, 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 the agreement will be enforceable except to the extent that it doesn't contravene Korean public law, which... Um, is really the underlying theme of this video. So let's move on. Okay, so the public law, 
So as I said before, uh, we have the Monopoly Regulation and Fair Trade Act and the Fair Agency Transactions Act. And they're administered by the Korean Competition Authority, which is the Fair Trade Commission. So the penalties can be really quite significant uh, under the Mono Monopoly Regulation and Fair Trade Act. There can be a 500 million won fine, which would be about just under 400,000 US dollars or 2% of sales. And under the Fair Agency Transaction Act, uh, be Korean 150 million, so approximately what, a bit over 100,000 US dollars and two years in prison. So it's something you want to be... Um, uh, concerned about you know if you're if you're if you're in the in England and you're trying to enforce in Korea well it's kind of a theoretical concern however uh, if you want an ongoing relationship in Korea it's something that you need to um, keep in mind and also uh, if you if you subsequently want to enter the market yourself then it's it's relevant to that extent okay so some things to look out for. Okay, so th these things uh, are generally uh, illegal in Korea. Uh, so I'll go over them very quickly. Uh, resale price maintenance, uh, dividing the market. So you can't have territories uh, within Korea. So you can't give one distributor, you know, a sales area and another distributor a different sales area then targets you have to be very, very careful about targets especially termination for failure to keep uh, targets Korean law <clears throat> excuse me is also really hot on uh, any any provisions which uh, would um, interfere with the the management of the distribution in Korea they, they really don't like that at all and then if you have you know a contract and then you want to upgrade that contract then you have to be very careful about uh, how you do that uh, is you're not allowed to impose a contract on less favorable terms okay that's all I need to talk about for this uh, short video if you have any questions please contact me uh, on the addresses the email address telephone number given here thank you very much take care